Hello, hello, I'm Anne Lovegrove and welcome to our reflection. In 1944, a very famous film was released. It was Shakespeare's Henry V and Sir Laurence Olivier played the starring role as King Henry. Before the Battle of Agincourt, during the Hundred Years' War in 1415, on St Crispin's Day, the King is to be seen in his most well-known pose. He was dressed in full armour and rode on a magnificent white horse that reflected his strength and leadership. Zacharias' ministry to his people in the Old Testament was to encourage spiritual renewal amongst the returned exiles from Babylon. In the first part of chapter 9, judgments are foretold on several enemies, one of whom was Alexander the Great. He was a ruthless campaigner who, like Henry V, advanced on a war horse, capturing area after area. But God promised to protect his people, and although Alexander the Great did go to Jerusalem, he didn't actually attack the city. Now let me read you today's verse, Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous, and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The people were to rejoice and be glad that their promised king was coming. And what we see here foretold beautifully describes the one who is the Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. He was not like any of the other kings of the past who were often wicked and cruel. Instead of riding on an eye-catching horse, the king that Zechariah foretold would be mounted on a colt, the foal of a humble donkey. For the king to come's mission would not be about defeating physical enemies, but would battle for the hearts and souls of all mankind. It's through his battle that, by faith, we gain peace and reconciliation with God. The coming king is described as righteous. Peter, the disciple of Jesus, who had closely lived with him, said this, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. 1 Peter 2 verse 22 And it's because this king is utterly pure that he was able to be the perfect sacrifice for our salvation, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This king had never been given a crown of gold. Instead, on his head was placed a crown of thorns as he gave himself for us on the cross. Israel's past rulers had for the most part brought unhappiness, dwindling faith in God, captivity and doom. The king to come would bring rejoicing and hope to his people. Palm Sunday on the 28th celebrates how Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. The crowds tore palm branches from the trees and threw down their garments before the donkey and its royal rider. They shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means, Lord, please save us. The people would have recalled Zachariah's words and the significance of all Jesus' actions that day. Sadly though, just a few days later, their words of exaltation turned to ones of rejection. Many cried out, let him be crucified. And we, what shall we say to this King as we travel through this last week or so of Lent? Will we daily give thanks to the Righteous One who gave himself for us on the cross by seeking to model our lives on him? Will we seek to tell others of this King who said, I am the way and the truth and the life and speak to them of his salvation. And despite all that we've experienced over these past months and the remaining uncertainty of the future, will we rejoice greatly that our King has given us true hope and will indeed come again. Let's pray. Loving Father, who sent Jesus Christ to save us and to give us peace and reconciliation, may we rejoice that you are the King who has all authority and power modelling our lives upon your life and seeking to witness to others of you as Saviour. We ask this in the name of the King who was and is and is to come. Amen. Our song for today is, uh, appropriately I hope, you are the King of Glory.